Mary. Hi, to Tom. How are you today? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. On this beautiful day. It is. Another beautiful day in Ventura County, isn't yep, it? Yep, it is. Hi, I'm Mary Marinville, and I'm here with Tom McGrath. He comes from a long line of Ventura County farmers, and he is a farmer himself for many years. And you are also a partner of Ag Land Services? Correct. And you have your own farm? We do. Okay, mm -hmm. and tell us some of the other things you do in Ventura County. Well, grew up growing vegetables, strawberries, and citrus with my dad and my brother. Uh, very blessed to have been born into a farming family, and it was a pretty easy decision as far as what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, after getting out of the college and the service in 69, 70, been farming full-time since then. Mm -hmm. We lost my dad uh, way too early in life. We did strawberries, vegetables. He was one of the first growers in Ventura County in the early 50s to plant strawberries. And uh, lost my dad toward the end of the 80s. My brother and mother and I continued on. And then in early in the mid 90s, uh, we decided uh, we wanted to get, pursue the avocado business, and uh, and that was a that was a dream of your father to that was to grow avocados. That was my dad was always a, a forward thinker. He w watched <clears throat> one of the first growers, uh, actually that came here in the county to, to the county in 1949 from Watsonville with the Driscoll family when they planted some of the first strawberries happened to be a neighbor on some property adjoining some ground that my dad was leasing. Mm -hmm. And he got acquainted, acquainted with uh, this gentleman's name was Cy Kennedy. And after a couple of years of kind of looking over the fence, my dad decided to try <laughs> some strawberries in the early 50s. And we grew strawberries for almost 40 years. 40 years? Yeah. And did you sell them to Driscoll's? No, we actually, uh, we had a couple of marketers that marketed them for us. Uh, and. Uh, and then in the last few years of our operation, we actually marketed them ourselves under our own label. Okay, great. Yeah. And so you um, went on to, uh, to um, plant mm -hmm. and grow avocados. How many acres of avocados did you start with? Well, it's interesting. When I came on board, when we, we basically shut down our vegetable and strawberry operation, and my, my brother ended up taking care of our citrus. There wasn't enough acreage. Um, for me to take care of. I spent one year traveling up and down California actually buying buying vegetables for a friend of mine that had a vegetable processing plant. And that was interesting, but I knew that that was gonna be short-lived. And out of the blue, some friends of mine that, that um, started Agland Services, one of the gentlemen left and they asked me in 1995 if I'd like to join as a partner. And I was thrilled to do that and I've been there ever since. And we, so I actually stepped into an ongoing farming operation and then we, my, my family and I and a couple of other partners were able to purchase a ranch out near Fillmore and we now have 200 acres of avocados there. So you have 200 and I've been to your ranch mm -hmm. and it is lovely, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So you have 200 of your own acres and then how many acres do you help manage with Agland? We Ag manage, uh, Agland manages about a thousand acres of avocados between Santa Barbara and Ventura County. Wonderful, yep. wonderful. And why do uh, so many uh, growers that grow avocados, why do they choose Hass avocados to grow? It's our basic bread and butter uh, variety, and, and of which over the years there have been many derivations of Hass. Uh, some have done well, some have, and right now I, one, of the, one of the first ones that pops into mind is the lamb Hass, which is uh, basically a, a cousin to the, to the original Hass avocado. It's a much bigger fruit, it's slower to mature, it comes in later in the season. But there are many derivations that have been bred uh, over the years by the avocado the re uh, research at the folks at the university. And uh, we actually have a variety that's very popular now that was developed in South Africa. So we have a number of different oh, really? classes, but our basic is the Hass. And then we will plant green skins, bacons, ettingers, um, other ones for pollinators that we insert into our orchards with a Hass. Okay, for so basically it's the Hass, it's the size and the oil content. Mm -hmm. and the taste. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And how long, we're right here, we're standing in front of a, a Hass tree, how long does it take from blossom to the time when the avocado can be harvested? We're basically looking at about a year cycle. A year? Yeah. And I've heard also that 
Trees alternate year, one year from the next. And one year you might get 10,000 pounds per acre, mm -hmm. and the next you might get 20,000 pounds per acre. And is that dependent upon weather, or is that just the cycle of the tree? It's the cycle of the tree, it really is. And sometimes the, the poundage can be quite a bit less on the off year and can be quite a bit more. We're trying very hard as an industry and as growers through uh, our cultural practices and our nutritional practices to try to even out the highs and the lows. But we are able to get phenomenal yields on the, on the, on the bigger years, and we're just striving to, to, uh, to be able to even that out and uh, have good, and we do get good, decent uh, yields on the, on the off years, but there, there can be big swings. Okay, is there any agricultural practices that are brand new that are helping you to increase your yields? Well, there's, there's so many advances that have come on, both as far as uh, irrigation, irrigation management, um, micro sprinklers, uh, and nutritionally, we're learning more and more all the time. We're very blessed to have some of the best folks in the, uh, in the industry. Dr. Ben Faber is here available to us in Ventura County, although he travels up and down the state from the north down to the south. He's the expert. He's the expert. He ben really Faber. Is. Ben okay. Faber. Yeah, okay. and there is another gentleman whose name slips my mind at the moment that, that is down in the, in the San Diego County, Fallbrook, Temecula, down in that area. And I was just reading an article on both of them, but the, the second gentleman's name skipped. Uh, skip, Do you skip. call him Dr. Avocado? Well, no, we just call, <laughs> we just call him Ben. But I have to remember when I because we've been great friends for a long time. But I always have to remember when I'm introducing him to someone new that it is Dr. Faber. And, and Ben's a joy. He just lives for this and does work in citrus and other fruits too. But uh, his his uh, favorite are avocados. Okay, the 2011 Ventura County Agricultural Report just came out. What uh, crop number is avocados in in Ventura County? Is it five or six? Boy, Mary, I think. It's five. Five. I believe it's five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's five because we have two of the biggest avocado growers uh, in the state, I believe. Mission Produce and Calavo are both here mm -hmm. dueling it out to try mm -hmm. to um, provide as many avocados to the market as possible. And they're doing a very good job, both of them. Mm -hmm. And um, just some other questions that I have for you about the tree and about the growth itself. Tom, you mentioned earlier that it takes about one year from blossom to mm -hmm. the time that the avocados are ready to be harvested. Correct. And do you see this one up here? How, um, how old is that avocado approximately? Well, let's see now. We're, we're looking at August right now. Um, probably four to five months. That's a piece of fruit, depending on the weather, that and its oil content that might e might be able to be picked uh, in in January of 2013. January of 2013. Yep. And is that usually when they're? Um, it is. It, we start looking for larger fruit, and we do the oil testing, which is critical. They want 22% uh, oil, and we want to be sure we have that so that the consumer gets a good oily piece of fruit. And what we do, depending on the year and depending on how the market is, but but mainly to, to take the, get heavier fruit off the trees, so that lets the smaller, it takes the burden, a little bit of a burden off the tree, and then the smaller fruit can start to mature. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and so you take a few off, and then you test them before you start harvesting the whole exactly. orchard. right, and then, okay. then we basically start what we call a size pick, mm -hmm. and we'll pick um, a certain ounces, maybe eight or nine ounces, and we'll instruct our harvesting crews that uh, that we want uh, no smaller than an eight or a nine ounce piece of fruit and leave everything else on the tree. Okay, yep. so do they, like they do with lemon harvesting, do they use a sizing ring? They don't actually use a, a ring. The, most of these pickers are so experienced that they can basically look at a piece of fruit and, uh, and, and, know, know, and know okay. what it is. And then they put it in their harvesting bag, mm -hmm. and then they put it in the larger crates, and Into then it goes the off, off to the packing house. And you, we were saying also that we have two of the biggest marketers, Correct. Um, if not the biggest, in California, Calavo and Mission Produce are here. Correct. And um, I know that they have techniques now, state-of-the-art techniques, to help the fruit fruit ripen before it gets to the supermarket. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, I can. It's, it's uh, the two, both Calavo and Mission, have pioneered the uh, this um, ripening process, 
and I don't know the, the technicalities of it, but they've spent a lot of a lot of time and energy and money in developing this thing, where they do a they do a storage thing, and I believe it's it's based on uh, temperature and humidity. Okay. And, and, and they have ripening centers now, both of them around the country, where they'll send the green fruit and take it to the ripening centers so that they can take it right from their ripening centers in different parts of the country and get it right to the major markets. Mm. I'm always wondering about that because sometimes I'll go into the market and it's perfect yeah. and it's ready to go and sometimes it's a little hard and I don't mind. Yeah. So then I bring it home and set it on my kitchen table in a nice bowl mm -hmm. and then it, it ripens when it's ready. And uh, so I have a ripe avocado here and avocados, I have to tell you, you'll be glad to hear this, is my favorite fruit. Mm -hmm. And I was very happy to hear that not only is it my favorite fruit, but it's very, very nutritious. It has a lot of potassium. It has uh, a lot of fiber, correct? And it's mm -hmm. monounsaturated fat, so it's very um, good for your heart. Can you tell us anything more? You've pretty much covered it. it a number of years ago, the, the marketing folks were, for it were having a fit because it, someone had come out and said, well, it's got too much of the wrong kind of the fat or something like that. But they do say do now... Do you want to try this one? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But they do say, there's no doubt about it, it's just about one of the healthiest pieces of fruit that you, that you possibly can eat. And my, my wife's grand niece, who is about two years old now, we have some wonderful pictures of her with a lot of avocados, some going into her mouth and some going all over her face. She absolutely loves avocados. Oh, uh, well, they are just so delicious. I just put a little lemon juice or lime juice and a little uh, salt and it's ready to go. But I also use it for guacamole, of, por of course, salad on sandwiches. I will use it um, all day long if I could. But these are super nutritious. If you're not a fan of avocados, you should be. And thank you so much, Tom, for being my August Farmer of the Month in Ventura County. I, Pleasure, do, I do appreciate it. Absolutely. And you're one of my favorite farmers, too. Thank you, Mary, for all your great work.